ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் வாட் ஆர் வி கோயிங் டு சி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ டு டை வி ஹாவ் சி அபவுட் வேரியஸ் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் மெட்ரிக்ஸஸ் அண்ட் ஹவு டு டூ பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் யூசிங் லோட் ரன்னர் யூசிங் ஜேமீட்டர் அண்ட் யூசிங் நியூ லோட் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் அபவுட் திஸ் வீடியோ வை இஸ் திஸ் வீடியோ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் தி அதர் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் வீடியோஸ் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் வி கோயிங் டு சி டுடே so today we are going to see about the client side performance testing and what are the metrics we have to consider while doing this client side performance testing so before we move on to client side performance testing we should understand what is a client side testing and what is a server side testing so far in many of our videos we run or we test an application with huge amount of user loads with a load test with a stress test or with a soak test we vary the load we vary the data and we do all sort of testing and we monitor the response time of the pages we monitor the cpu utilization of the servers we monitor the memory utilization of the servers so what does or what brings the difference between the client side and the server side testing So let's see what is a client side testing and then let's see what is a server side testing and we will see in detail what are the metrics we have to consider in client side testing and what is the advantages and what are the various other information about client side testing So before we move on to the video this is me your Vasan Shanmugam I welcome you all to Little Sla YouTube channel please do subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet like comment and share your comments and feedbacks in the comment section so first let's see what is a server side testing so in the server side testing we evaluate the logical scenarios we focus on the application behavior under various user load and we check the server's response time so what is a client side testing so the client side testing is to evaluate the end to end scenarios while evaluating the rendering of elements like the css or the javascript files which we have in the web page or in the application so what is common in both these client side and server side testing so the common thing is in both of these testings we run the website to check the performance and these tests check the application for any bottlenecks we review the time and it takes to load under different speed and analyzes its loading speed the stability of the application and the scalability of the application so what are we checking or what do we observe in the client side performance testing what do we check or what do we observe we observe how fast and efficient the application is we observe the response time of the app web application if the user is using the website for the first time and when they revisit the website for the second time because we all know the cache plays an important role in it and the third one is the time the web page takes to render the elements to the users and then lastly the time the web application or the page takes for the user to interact with the first web element and the average time to display the web content and we will see in detail what exactly is the first web element and the average time to display the web content during our demo on client side testing with lighthouse and various other tools so what is the objective of client side performance testing see the main thing we have to understand is why should we adapt or why should we do the client side performance testing when we have options to do the server side testing why should we test the client side performance so the objective of the client side performance testing or any performance testing is to evaluate and make necessary changes in the problem areas so the first thing is we compress the image and the javascript code and then to provide faster response times and to enable better cache techniques 
and the JavaScript code caching reduces the startup time of any website. And also we make sure that the implementation of necessary changes after evaluating the results of server-side performance testing. So any change that we make as the end of the server-side performance testing should not have impact to the client-side performance. And then to minimize the HTML, the cascading style sheets, which we call a CSS and the JavaScript content, and removing all the unused CSS and JavaScript codes because whenever the application is getting built, the developers will have or will create all the necessary CSS and JavaScript codes. But when the application grows on and on and on, there are some G CSS or JavaScript codes which might not be required. So all these CSS and JavaScript codes which are obsolete and which are not required has to be removed. And this is one of the main objective of client-side performance testing. And then last thing is upgrading the server hardware to create more memory space. So to study analyze and make necessary changes in the application software engineers use metrics to study the key performance indicators to arrive to a conclusion so let's now move on to the metrics that we collect during the performance testing so these metrics which we define here are the metrics which we estimate the health the quality and the productivity of the software and these metrics establishes the quality of the performance in quantitative terms and studying these metrics helps the software engineers and web developers to assist in understanding how much improvement is required and where exactly it is required it is not something like beating around the bush it exactly tell you wh where is the improvement is required and this metrics helps with early detection of problems with an application or website and these things since we mentioned here as early detection so these testing can happen then and there when the developers complete the cycle or complete the development of a particular page and this actually helps to maximum reduce any performance issues in the client side and this metric is a determiner to check the progress of the development and they also provide critical insights about the application and the software behavior and this is a measure of quality assurance and it is easy to discuss and improve upon due to its quantitative nature and this metrics helps the developers to make important decisions such as estimating the cost of a project and schedule a future project. And finally, these metrics evaluates whether the current technology needs any modifications because every now and then we get the technology getting upgraded, every now and then we get the Java or the .NET or we get every day we get an upgrade. So we make sure that the current technology needs any modifications so let's now see the types of software testing metrics so we have three metrics one is the process metrics the second one is product metrics and third one is project metrics so what is this process metrics this process metrics defines the characteristics and execution and this is essential for improving the software development lifecycle, which we call as SDLC. So what is a product metrics? It defines a product's performance, the design, the quality and complexity to tackle the quality. And finally, the project metrics, which measures the overall quality of a project. And this helps to calculate the team's performance calculates the project's cost and defects and estimates the deliverables. So, what exactly is the client-side metrics in performance testing? So, the client-side metrics in performance testing test the application's response for different clients using different platforms such as desktop, 
mainly mobile since every user or every one of us uses mobile for any of accessing our web application so mobile is playing a main role and then the smart TVs nowadays we all use our smart TV for most of our browsing so the smart TVs and these client side metrics checks the interaction speed location and the connection speed so so far we saw about the various factors and various attributes of client side performance testing and let's now see what are the important metrics that we collect in performance testing so just a recap if you we all remember we all know what we do in the server side performance testing so we collect the response time we collect the throughput we collect the cpu utilization we collect the memory utilization and we collect the amount the throughput the number of hits the success failures of the pages so when we come to client side performance testing we have the time to first byte the cpu idle time the payload time to interact speed index load time and time render so what is time to first byte so this time to first byte is the main metric which is the one that measures the time spent connecting with the server and downloading the site's contents and the acceptable range yes we have an SLA so the acceptable range of this time to first byte is between 100 to 500 milliseconds with anything being under 100 milliseconds is even better and the unacceptable range which is beyond the SLA is anything more than 500 milliseconds so the first time to first the time to first byte should be less than 100 is better 100 to 500 milliseconds is better and anything beyond 500 is unacceptable and developers can improve upon this by reducing the HTTP requests by optimizing the application code and database queries and use a content delivery network so all these things has to be handled effectively and then the CPU idle time this CPU idle time measures the amount of time the CPU was not busy and was waiting for a response from the third party or from the servers and then the payload in web development that word payload refers to the difference between essential information in a chunk of data and the information that is used to support it and in the context of malware payload refers to the transmission of malicious code through worms or phishing or emails and any other mechanisms so this payload is very important in the client side metrics and then when we come to the time to interact so this time to interact our TTI which we measure to take for a website to become fully interactive and a fully interactive page displays useful content and this time to interact is responsive to user interaction within 50 milliseconds and the acceptable range of time to interact is between 0 and 7.3 milliseconds so which we call as the best SLA so it has to be between 0 and 7.3 milliseconds and anything between 0 to 4 milliseconds is fast and anything or any TTI the time to interact between 4.1 to 7.3 is moderate and beyond the SLA is 7.3 milliseconds which is considered slow and there are few ways to improve this time to interact that is by reducing the payload we have seen the previous metric the payload so by reducing the payload with code splitting by decreasing the JavaScript by lowering the main thread work and optimizing third-party JavaScript so by using all these tuning methods the time to interact will be more quicker and more fast which is less than 4 milliseconds which is the best of the SLA and next is the speed index and this speed index calculates the time it takes for the contents of a page to become visibly populated and this speed index is measured in milliseconds and the lower the score the faster is the loading performance so the speed index always has to be very less and then the loading time 
This loading time matrix measures the time it takes for a page to appear on the screen. And this is calculated from the time we click on a link to when it finishes loading to completion. So we all see a spiral on the top of the web page. So the moment it stops and the moment we see an X button, which is everything is loaded. So that is the one or that is a symbol of time or fi the finishing the loading to completion. And this is crucial because this particular metric determines the search engine ranking and this increases the customer satisfaction and we can reduce this load time by minimizing the file size. This combines the HTML, the CSS and JavaScript files and choosing the most appropriate hosting option and enabling browser caching. So again, we have the SLA or the acceptable range here. The acceptable range of load time is a contentious subject with users wanting the optimal time to be three seconds while the average load time is 15 seconds. And then the time to render, which is the final metric we use to calculate. And this metric calculates its time to process and display elements to the users. And finally, why do we need to do all these client-side performance testing and the server-side performance testing? Everything is for the customer satisfaction when it comes to using our website. And performance testing is useful for checking the usability of our website. And this client-side metrics and performance testing are the tools that will help us in achieving the best possible performance. So with that, we come to an end. I believe this video would have been very useful to you and it has opened a new doors to you on the performance testing end. I believe this video would have been very useful. So please do subscribe to our channel, share the video with your friends. We'll meet with another interesting video in our upcoming session. Until then, it's bye-bye from Vasan Shanmugam and Little's Law.